Hello and welcome to the oddest little podcast on the internet. We are the Odd Pod. What's going on? My name is Stacy Kruger. Who are you, boys? I am casually challenged, and yes, I saw Infinity War. <laughs> I am Rad Hazard, and I played Infinite Warfare. I'm Ryan, and you can call me Infinity Ryan. I hate all of you. I'm Stacy Kruger, and I, I, I. You were in the city that had Infinity. War. Th- there we go. I was in the city that had Infinity. War. <laughs> I don't feel so good. Hi guys, how you doing today, Mister Kruger? Well, I don't feel so good. It, it depends on your perspective, I guess. I uh, do. You feel so good, dude? That fucking meme won't go away. It's everywhere. <laughs> Seriously, the Chuck Norris one is fantastic, though. That is the best one so far. Uh, you'd have to show it. To you me. haven't seen the Chuck. No. Uh, it shows Thanos snap his fingers. Chuck Norris starts to dissolve away. All of a sudden, Chuck Norris gets put back together. Like that's right, bitch. You can't take Chucky down, baby. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know, man. I, I I'm a I, I'm a sucker for the Chuck Norris memes. I don't know why. It's been how many fucking years the Chuck Norris memes have been going around? You know, uh, I, I remember seeing uh, the hell uh, playing WoW when Chuck Norris was uh, helping promote WoW. You know, they're hiring him and seeing all those Chuck Norris memes in WoW too. And I was like, yeah, Chuck Norris memes. I like these. I, I couldn't. Damn it. So now that I see the Infinity War one, I'm going, yes, this is awesome. Let's keep doing this. <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, Chuck Norris survives off of his memedness. I say, has he had any acting roles at all lately? Like, at all? Yeah, I'm probably, but I, I think he's at a point where he doesn't need it. He's got residuals from every movie that he's ever made that gets played on wherever they get played, and that, that's the thing. He, he's, he survives off of his memeiness. True. You know? His last uh, role was on the Goldbergs. He did the voice of Boy Barry back in 2015. And then his last big movie was Expendables 2, Booker. That was it. Wow. He basically played up his memeness, you know. He (laughs) he came in as Chuck Norris. Like, Like, he was... He was he had a character name and everything, but the reason he was there is because he was Chuck Norris. And he did very meme Chuck Norris things in that movie. It, by the way, I personally think Expendables 2 was the best Expendables, and you don't have to have seen Expendables 1 to enjoy it. Expendables 2 is what Expendables 1 should have been. I've seen neither, so I have no opinion on it whatsoever. Uh, Expendables is basically let's get all the action stars of the eighties in one movie. Yeah, well, essentially, I, 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 I kind of understood the premise of it, and I've heard about it plenty of times. It's kind of hard not to. But it was the just problem, like, eh. the problem with the first Expendables was that it didn't take itself completely seriously, but it took itself seriously enough that. The action stars it had in it were okay, but they teased Bruce Willis and Schwarzenegger as being a part of it, and then Schwarzenegger comes in for literally less than a minute and says, good luck, I wouldn't take this mission, and leaves. Are you serious? And Bruce Willis (laughs) is the one giving the mission in that five minute tops scene and then he's gone from the movie so it's Stallone and really not a bunch of people from the 80s it's a bunch of people from the 90s and 2000s because Jason Statham wasn't a big star in the 80s um what's his face that played Bedlam in Deadpool 2 was a big star in the 90s and beyond uh so it's less a bunch of people from... Oh, I, I'm sorry. I take it back. Uh, Dolph Lundgren was big in the 80s. But the rest of them were actually from the 90s. It doesn't hurt the movie that much, though. 
But if you were going into the movie expecting a bunch of riffs on all these old action stars, you want to see Expendables <clears throat> too, okay. Because they literally make jokes about things that they've done. Like uh, Schwarzenegger has his classic I'll be back line, and there's some jokes made about it. And like I said, Chuck Norris comes in, and he's just basically Chuck Norris. Maybe I should actually watch this. Oh, it's who am I kidding? I'll watch pretty, it for 30 seconds. I hate it. <laughs> it's a pretty funny movie. Uh, like, like it's it's got it's got just pure action too. It, it's it it's light on plot, heavy on action. Exactly like all the '80s movies that it's making fun of. Just don't watch Expendables three because aside from. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, Van Damme was the bad guy in Expendables 2, I think. Yes, he was. They even brought so, yeah, Van Damme even, into it, huh? Even better movie for that. Yeah, uh, Expendables 3 was Mel Gibson. <laughs> and while he did an okay job, it, it, the, the movie took itself too seriously for 3. So, yeah, just watch Expendables 2. Good movie. Fun time. Eat popcorn. <clears throat> mm, popcorn. Speaking of popcorn, you have to bring that bucket with you every fucking time. So at the Logan movie theater, when we went to go see a certain movie, uh, <clears throat> some horror shit, awful, terrible movie. Well, I, we won't even mention the movie. It was that bad. Mm. No, it just had the rock, you know. Then it would have been a bad movie. <laughs> Jesus. No, but we went there and uh, went to go see Deadpool 2. Oh, we're totally not going to talk about that, I swear. Um... <clears throat> Ryan came up. He's like, I'm seeing Karen's bucket. I'm like, what the fuck do you have a bucket for? He's like, oh, it's for popcorn. Apparently, if you buy this bucket ahead of time, you get like, you know, refills for like, uh, I think a quarter of the price. I'm like, yes, thank you very much. So I am just eating a humongous tub of popcorn like a fucking fatty, enjoying myself. It was awesome, man. It was fucking mm -hmm. awesome. Delicious, delicious popcorn. I, I. So there's a couple of foods out there. One of them is popcorn that I like it, but I also don't like it. I like it because it's delicious. I don't like it because the kernels get stuck in my teeth. Yeah, that. Oh. <laughs> and I, I, it just annoys the crap out of me after I eat. You know, I'll sit there and I'll eat it and I'll be just enjoying the heck out of it. And then after I'm done eating it, my tongue is sitting there going... And kernels, fuck it, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I would kill to sit next to you in a the theater just to hear you start cursing out your teeth. You bastard, well. let go of the kernels. <laughs> so, we've mentioned it a couple times now. Deadpool 2. Oh, we, we don't want to talk about that, do we? That's, it. That's not such a big deal, right? Blah. Thoughts? Um, I have a lot of them. Like, a lot of them. It, 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 um, okay, where do we start? There's a lot of thoughts in this movie. Uh, my first, and my first thought is it was too pretty to be a Deadpool movie. It was just too well put together, in my opinion. Like, because the reason why I like Deadpool 1 is because it fits so well with the grain of the comic, where it's just kind of feels thrown together. It, you could tell it was a low budget film. Hmm. Where the second one well, was very polished compared to the first one. It was like, oh, that lost a little bit of it for me. I I actually... Okay, so I agree with you that the second one definitely had a bigger budget. I mean, you could tell. Oh, yeah. But I actually feel like the first one was, from an editing standpoint, better made. Uh, it, it's... Okay, First of all, before everybody starts jumping on, you know, the idea, oh, he hates it! How dare you hate this thing that I like? I don't hate it. I enjoyed it quite quite a lot. I am going to own it on home video when it comes out. But for everything that it did right, and there were problems with the first movie too. The, you know, most movies have problems you know when you watch it multiple times like uh, like I do and you start analyzing it as you watch it but overall 
the first Deadpool just generally mm-hmm. holds up. Yeah. I feel like there were more problems with this one. Just weird little things that, you know, watching it one time, I enjoyed it a lot. But there's little things in the back of my mind that were like, did maybe they could have done that differently. Maybe they could have, like, for example, spoilers, because we do that here. Um, when the X-Force team was being killed off one by one, I liked that. I thought it was hilarious. Right, dude? But it also went on, like, maybe two or three minutes too long. Like, like I feel like they could have they could have done that whole thing maybe just a little bit faster. True, but at the same time, I felt it was right because it built up going, you know they're going to die. But then you go, well, maybe this one might actually make it. And then, the, uh, what the fuck was his name? Peter, Paul, Bill? The, the fucking... Uh, Paul, Peter. Paul, oh, Peter. Was it Peter? Okay. The Peter it guy Peter. lands, and he's the only one who makes it. You're like, what the fuck? The schmuck made it? Come on. And then you just sit there going, he's going to die. And you're just biting, you're like, you know it's going to come. And you wait and wait and wait, and then it finally happens. You go, yeah, that was, that was, to me it was a payoff. Like the elongated, ver- and was that, was the Invisibler, or whatever the fuck his name was? The Vanisher. The Vanisher. The Vanisher. <laughs> I can't what the fuck his name was. He was so, like, pointless in the movie. Um, was that Brad Pitt when they shocked him? That was absolutely Brad Pitt. I was uh, like, there, okay. There's, okay. So there are a few cameos in the movie that are very, very quick. One, of, the two of them, I didn't even catch. Uh, one was uh, I, I definitely caught the Brad Pitt. That was hilarious. Matt Damon is in the movie. Well, where? Uh, I I can't remember where. I I want to say it's in one of the end. Uh, if you stayed for the end credits when Deadpool is doing his time traveling. Oh, yeah. Uh, supposedly Matt Damon is in one of those scenes. Again, I don't know where because I missed it, but I was I was, you know, watching reviews and spoiler stuff and they were talking about that one. Another one that everybody said, oh, how dare they not put Stanley in the movie? He is sort of. So when they're coming in and all dying and uh, Domino doesn't die. The building she lands in has a graffiti portrait of Stan Lee on the side. Oh, no shit. I didn't see that. I, I, I probably saw it, just didn't see it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I totally missed it because Ooh, I was paying more attention to, oh, uh, she's totally going to live, but the rest are dying. <laughs> like, I remember I, seeing uh, Domino. I was like, yes! They brought in Domino. I was so happy because I didn't watch any trailers. I watched nothing about the new Deadpool. Well, I watched one trailer. I did watch one. I was just well, so ecstatic seeing they brought um, Domino in. I really liked this this Domino. I know there was a lot of stupid people on the internet talking about how dare they change her to a black woman. She's a white woman in the comics. Who the fuck cares? She was so... Okay, but, she's so B to C list. You can change that race. Yeah, I I agree with that. (laughs) But, but, I did do a little bit of research on Domino before I saw the movie. And the small problem I had was totally fixed when I actually saw the movie. And that is that the Marina Baccarin character, uh, his girlfriend in the two movies, Mm -hmm. she, that character, her name... Uh, I honestly I can't remember her name. She's just dead girlfriend. Oh, yeah. uh, Vanessa. She, yeah. she Vanessa is Domino. So here's what happens: Domino comes back from the future with Cable, and her mission is to kill Deadpool for some slight that he caused, which is you know could be any million number of things. So. While she's Domino, she begins dating him without the makeup on, and then she eventually tries to kill him and reveals that she's Domino, and then they end up, I I don't know what happens later. But 
that was my only small stupid issue before I saw the movie was that why would you put the character in that is his girlfriend with the name that Domino has and then recast mm-hmm. Domino it's one of those comic book nerd things you know you know uh, remember we discussed this a long time I, I think it was before you even came on the show Ryan um, we talked about how death was Deadpool's girlfriend. He always was obsessed with death because he loved death, and that's why he's always trying to kill himself. And I was always bitching about how they brought Vanessa in instead of death. And I was like, God, I hope they can pull it off. This movie, they did it just in a kind of awkward, backhanded sort of way. I, a lot of people are saying that. Like, is she death? Is she going to be the thing? Is she, I don't, I don't think they're, fo- it's kind of like the, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, his insanity thing that's done in the comics where he's got like, you know, multiple personalities and I'm all still that pissed stuff. they didn't bring that in yet. Mm. I, I just feel like I don't think they're gonna deal with that in the movies because it's just, you know, it's two hours, you got other stuff to deal with. What I did like though, that I was uh, I was laughing as they killed off all the different characters, but they still had X Force. Oh yeah. They just backdoor piloted an X Force movie with a slightly different lineup. Mm-hmm. I still like how he brought it in. You know this whole X Men thing. I don't like it. <laughs> We're X Force. Like yeah, man. God damn right, Deadpool. Um, I liked it. It was good. Well, and, okay, no, I'm talking about the X Force part, not the whole movie. I'm, I'm torn. The one thing I do have to say about the whole death Vanessa girl, how they switch it off. At least now, we have a reason why Deadpool is so stupidly suicidal with his missions, and why he's always over the top, and why he always tries to do things that could possibly get him killed. Well, sort of though. Did did you stay for the mid credits ender? Yeah. He saved Vanessa. Oh, fuck me. You're right. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so, I completely... so he doesn't have that anymore. <laughs> fuck me. I forgot about that. I hope you sharp, sharpen the butter knife. God damn it. The butter spreader or whatever. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, he, he went back and I, I have to say, uh, I, I so there's something I do for every movie now, uh, especially comic book movies. There's a website called aftercredits.com, and it literally tells you if there's anything after the credits that you should stay for. It even gives ratings on it and stuff. I don't pay attention to the ratings of stuff. I just look to see, is there anything after the credits? Well, it said... Yes, there is a, quote, stinger, which means that during the initial credits, there will be something. And then there's also the end credits. And it said no. So after he did the whole uh, time travel thing and he saved Vanessa and it did a couple other things, I was like, well, that was funny. I got up to leave and then it kept going. And I was like oh, well, what's going on here? And the the whole Green Lantern thing and the, the killing the terrible version of Deadpool thing was like just brilliant. I saw that. I started giggling my ass off. I was like, fuck yeah! Dude! <laughs> me! Me being me, when he started shooting the shitty Deadpool, I stood up doing a standing ovation, the whole fucking you remember this, right? He was started it? clapping, then the rest of the theater clapped out. Just cheering, him. yes! Yeah! Fuck yeah! Kill that now, son of a bitch! Now, here's the best <laughs> part about that scene. Because it was done in a way where it was literally taken shot for shot from the original Wolverine movie, you could edit that scene into the original Wolverine movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna go back and watch that? I, mean, I I did once, and I I I I, I felt a little uh, physically ill watching it. It was bad, dude. It was so bad. The first time I watched it, it was awful. 
I went back and watched it a second time for this podcast of all things. I still hate myself for it. It was awful. Like you can, I, I, I think it's back when I still want date my old girlfriend Pink. I was sitting there just, oh, you far, I hate you. <laughs> She's like, why don't you turn off? Fuck you! I have to do it for the podcast. <laughs> just muttering to myself the whole time. Oh, and then I saw Deadpool, the you know that version of Deadpool, and I may have screamed at the TV a lot. <laughs> it was bad, man. It was bad. Yeah, the the version of Deadpool we have now is definitely the best. Ironically, the version of the X-Men from Deadpool is better than the other X-Men movies. Like, I am treating all the other X-Men movies as non-canon at this point. Okay, I'm trying to think. Uh, who the fuck was in that room? I saw Beast and that was it. Oh, good grief. Uh, well, I, we, Beast was obvious because he's blue. Yeah. Um, it was just so quick. I know, I, I know Cyclops was there because I saw the goggles. Probably a version of Professor X. Because if you if you looked, they weren't any of the famous actors that we've come to know and love from the previous I movies. I was really upset eight. it wasn't Patrick Stewart, man. But I it, it was him. none of them. It was just Stewart. a bunch of, like, quick cameo actors in makeup you know i mean um, oh, he was the best uh, yeah i don't i don't know who exactly was there but the i like the idea that that movie set up that the reason that you never see any of the other x-men at the x-mansion is not because they couldn't afford it which is the truth it's because they're all avoiding deadpool <laughs> 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 I love that just get away from him Duh. just get in the closet get in the closet he's coming down the don't, stairs don't make eye contact shh shh turn off the lights <laughs> just the thought of somebody hiding in the fucking like behind the seat like the couch the hallway couch he won't see me from underneath it <laughs> now there was one other thing that uh, I'd, I I don't know I didn't mind it but it was definitely noticeable and that was how much gorier this movie was like the pr- the first movie was violent no, it and it had a couple of uh pretty disgusting moments like when he cut off his own hand and you know <laughs> blood sprayed everywhere still funny as hell but this one went like a step beyond and was uh, horror movie levels of gore like when he got split in half <laughs> there, there are many things you can do with that with that moment uh you know you can do things like you do in, in uh Darth Maul got split in half and they just kind of glossed over the fact that there would be giant bits of gore falling out and it makes sense in a Deadpool movie that you'd have a bit more gore but they kind of like aimed the camera in such a way that you could clearly see all of his insides slowly pouring out of him. Oh, that was awesome. After the fact, you know, every time he was in camera and it was <clears throat> that combined with like the various deaths that the X-Force handled and the, all the other different things like it was a st- Step away from being a Saw movie at points. Uh, but it works so well because it was Deadpool. Because the idiot's gory as hell. The idiot just <laughs> does so many stupid things that get him into these positions where shit like this just happens. You know, it, it, to me, it fit perfectly with his character, though. I, I, like I said, I, I didn't mind it. It just was, you know, the more the more it went on, the more I started to notice it. And I was kind of like, huh, this is kind of kind of a gory one. Now, all right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, I, me, maybe me and you are about to get into the same thing. Can I get into my gripes about it? Go for it. And we'll see how many of these uh, go between the two of me and you, casual. You guys can chime in, too. I'm not trying to talk over you guys. I'm sorry. It's just we're doing our normal thing where we talk too goddamn much. I'm so, you know, <laughs> Ryan's over here mouthing, you son of a bitch. Voice out, go! I hate you. Uh, but everybody, please tell me if I'm in the wrong for some of these. 
it tried way too hard to be a Deadpool movie. It tried too hard to remind you it's a Deadpool movie. It's kind of like when I was playing Bioshock Infinite. And there were so many different times like, hey, by the way, we're still a Bioshock game. Remember this? Yeah, remember Rapture? We're going to go back down there so you can see it again. Yeah, remember De- we're, we're a Bioshock. It was so many times where it was just like uh, they had Weasel doing the same cracks about the avocado having sex with the even uglier avocado. Uh, they did so many like the, the there were so many shticks from the very first movie that they brought back. Like the opening credits was funny the first time. But I think the uh, the avocado thing was. I think that would have been a nice touch. Cause just kind of maybe hey, you know. Remember what I said about those first week? Oh, there's new characters. Oh yeah. Kind of like when you say it, when you repeat a joke a second time, like maybe they'll hear me this time. True. An avocado. Very true. You know, maybe if they didn't do so much to say, hey, we're a Deadpool movie, that the avocado line would be like, oh, I that was funny before. Oh, you're doing it to other people now. That is funny. Uh, but I I have. I have the exact same problem, but if for a different reason. I just fucking hated T.J. Miller. Oh, Weasel? Uh, I, I loved him. T.J. Miller, to me, is the same kind of comedian that Andrew Dice Clay was back when he was popular, or Dane Cook was back when he was popular. See, I love Andrew T.J. Dice Clay. Miller, <laughs> T.J. <laughs> Miller has a sh- his shtick is just saying stuff in his deadpan way, and everybody laughs. And being kind of an asshole as he does it. Like, like you know, oh, I'm, I'm just going to be rude and an asshole while I, while I very deadpan, you know, this somewhat humorous I, line. I can understand that. I can completely understand that. But what the hell? Apparently well, my echo okay. just turned off for no reason. Sorry about that. Uh, but, but but here's here's my problem with this, and and this this is actually kind of an issue with Deadpool too. So, ten years from now, nobody's going to remember T.J. Miller, or if they do, they're going to go, "Oh yeah, I remember when I liked him. What an idiot I was." I can understand what you're saying, but at the same time, for Weasel's character, I think he did it so well, and he's so perfect for the character of Weasel. Because to it's well, yeah, it's fine. But like you said, he recycled so many jokes this time. That's like, my question. Do though. something new. Well, that's my you question. Know? Was it the writing saying you're not allowed to be improving like you did the first movie, or was it just him I, being lazy? No, I don't think so. Because I mean, the whole reason they hired T.J. Miller in the first place was for his improving. I think that they just like. I think they wanted callbacks because every sequel wants callbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a secondary problem with the jokes in this one. Hmm. And that was too many of them were extremely of the right now in pop culture. Like, there were a bunch of jokes that were related to what's going on in superhero movies, not in general, oh, like the first movie, yes. but, like, specifically what's going on in Infinity War, what's going on in DC, you know, like, Justice League, what's going on, and they were fine, they were funny right now, but give this movie ten years, and half of the jokes in the movie are, people are gonna be like, Huh? I remember seeing uh, hearing the what you're so dark. What is this a DC movie? I was like a, a DC universe. I was like, God damn you! I fucking hate you so much for that joke. And, and, and but I again, loved it. that's that's pretty funny right now. Yeah. But DC is self correcting. They are hiring uh, people that aren't writing completely dark stories. So in ten years, when the DC movies are all good, we hope. Uh, that joke is no longer going to have relevance and and i mean this is a problem you just run into in comedy in general is how relevant do you keep it versus how generic because if you keep it too generic then it's too generic and if you put it to i i feel like the first deadpool rode the perfect line with that where they had just enough generic stuff where it's going to last a long time and you're going to laugh at it every time Whereas this one focused too much on within the last five years. Um, 
Yeah. Although I still laughed when he called Cable Thanos. Yeah, I know. That one made me giggle my ass off. I absolutely cackle my ass off. I'll disagree that DC movies aren't good. I like the dark. The dark is what makes them so good. But that's okay to have a difference in opinion. Well, no, I'm not saying that they aren't. Uh, you, you can have that. You can have your opinions on that. But they are dark. But they probably won't be in the next ten years because oh, not a lot of people like them because of that. You know, they they want. They they want them to be different, but they want them to be the same. It's the classic, you know, nobody can figure out what they really want. I understand, bud. I understand. Um, it's just, yeah, that was the main issue I had with Deadpool. It just, Deadpool 2, excuse me. It just felt too hard of going, hey, guys, we're still a Deadpool movie. Hey, just remember, we're always going to be, a, yeah, oh, no, here's another throwback. It's like, come on, man. But I, yeah, and, and once I, again, I can see that. I know you're going to disagree with me big time. But like I said with the first one, too much about the love bullshit. Uh, I mean, if they would have kept it with him being in love with death, and that's why he's always killing himself, and that's kind of they kind of haunt around that, just like the comics, then that's such a big deal. But now just, I got so bored with it. I I would say that. Because he is attempted to kill himself, maybe if they do a third one, which, based on the grosses, they probably will. Uh, even though Ryan Reynolds has come out and said he doesn't know if he wants to do a third one. Now, that could just be like he doesn't know what the grosses are yet, so he's just saying, well, maybe, but sometimes actors do that you know they just they feel like they've said everything they want to say i hope that's not true because i would love to see a deadpool 3 but um yeah uh there was another problem that i had and it was a weird one that uh, it's weird because they Deadpool meta comments on it in the movie, so it's okay, I guess. Wasn't a huge fan of the Joggernaut. Really? Really? I was like, I, I was a huge, like, I, I, I thought it was so cool that they actually did Juggernaut halfway well for once. They did the helmet correctly. They they finally referenced the fact that he's doing it to keep um, Xavier out of his head. I love that. That was so good. That was so fucking cool. Well, technically, they didn't say the name Xavier. He just said he had a brother that was psychic. That Yeah, any, we know that. And any fan of the lineage of between Juggernaut and Xavier is going to go, Oh, they're talking about Brother but- X! Yeah, I th- that part I liked. Uh, the the one thing that they didn't do, which I kind of wish they had done, was they didn't reference the ruby bands of Sidorak. They called him a mutant. He's not a mutant, but that's okay. It's it's a movie. I can accept minor changes, especially when they get most of the rest of the stuff right for him. The problem I had wasn't that stuff. I liked that they got Juggernaut mostly right. What I didn't like is how cartoony he looked. His CGI needed more render time. Um, okay. I, I can understand that. And, and when, so nice. when Deadpool made the joke in movie of, oh boy, oh boy, big CGI fight coming up, <laughs> I was like, okay, I can forgive it now because he's even making fun of the fact that, yep, both of these characters are CGI. But at the same time, it's like, but couldn't you have rendered it a little bit longer or something? I don't know. It just, he looked off compared to all the other characters. I have to say, I love what they did with um, Colossus in this movie. He started off as oh. the Boy Scout again, and then by the end of it, so good, just giggling as he's like, "Ooh, I'm breaking the rules." <laughs> I, I was like, you know what? I usually I'm usually not a huge fan of that because Klaus has always been a goody two shoes, but that was fucking hilarious, and especially the 
the commie joke from uh, uh, Juggernaut. I was like, that's fucking yes! awesome. I love it. I almost missed it because there was so much going on, but calling him a dirty commie, I was like, what? You should <laughs> what see- era are you from, Juggernaut? <laughs> Here I am falling on my seat in the fucking theater, cackling at the commie joke because of how many commie jokes I make left and right. Just, just out of just, you know, funniness. But I was just like, that's fucking awesome. I love that so much. It's, oh, God, is it good. But seriously, just the, 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 the giggle, um, the uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead's girlfriend. Uh, what the fuck was her name? I have Yukio. it here. Yukio. Yukio. Uh, Yukio. Hi. Hi, Yukio. I was like, ah, I love it. Just, it shows the two sided so, Deadpool. It was so good. Uh, all right. Let, let's, let's overanalyze Yukio like every other website is. And first of all, I'm going to bring up that everybody overanalyzed Teenage Negasonic Warhead when, or Negasonic Teenage Word, whatever. Yeah. Uh, everybody overanalyzed her character in Deadpool 1 when it came out because she wasn't the Negasonic Teenage Warhead from the comics and because uh, she was, like, everybody was like, well, how come she has this power? And how come they're there? A, because it's a movie. B, because of numerous licensing rights that still have to go on behind the scenes between the actual owners of Marvel Comics and the people that have the licensing for the movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, And C, which, by the way, is how the MCU got a hold of Scarlet Witch, because they made the deal, okay, you can have Negasonic Teenage Warhead and do whatever (laughs) you want with it, we're going to take Scarlet Witch and put him back in our universe because she is a part of the Avengers and has been for years. Okay. And we won't say mutant. Yukio is the same thing. She is a potential amalgam of a couple different characters and a possible joke reference to a classic, sort of classic Wolverine character. She's not a character that we all know, but let me put it this way. After the first Deadpool, everybody fell in love with Negasonic Teenage Warhead. I fell in love with Yukio within the first five seconds of Deadpool going, Yukio, I right, love dude? you. <laughs> I was like, yes, that was awesome. And the fact that they came out saying, yes, they're, uh, you know, they're a gay couple. Well, no shit. I mean, if we Which, couldn't see that door wide open. Apparently... This is the first LGBT superhero character, like, openly in comic movie history. That blows my mind. I didn't realize it has been that long that this has happened, but yay, great. Well, it blows my mind it took that fucking long. I mean, Uh, Jesus Christ, was it 2018? Christ. Right? But, uh, you know, if, if, if you couldn't see with the first movie that it was just the door is wide open saying... Hey, by the way, we're going to move into a gay couple. It, you're fucking blind. It was overly obvious, at least it's to me, because maybe it's just because I'm the, of the League of the Cocksuckers and I could see my own kind out there. Yeah, I mean, but it's just like, <laughs> like, yeah, we, we know she's a muff diver. We get it. Okay, whatever. You know, uh, but then we saw it and we saw our girlfriend. I was just like, that, that's perfect. It was a perfect counterbalance because you have the girly girl with Negasonic who's just like, Fuck you in your face. I'm like, that's awesome. I like it was so well balanced. And I love the fact that they didn't really show anything about Yukio until all of a sudden the final fight, she there she is whipping around fucking electricity. You're like, what the hell? She has well, powers? That, I thought she was just and a that girlfriend. Goes into a character that she that people are saying she's based on a character named Surge. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who she's based on. She is a new character in this mythology of the movies, mm-hmm. and I'm fine with that. I don't care. She's she's so perfect, and I hope they bring her back for Deadpool three. I know, I, I'm. I, I'd be amazed. I'd be absolutely amazed if Disney's like, no, we're not going to do a Deadpool three. Uh, That's too Fox. Uh, but, uh, I thought does Fox still own Deadpool? The, they own it until the deals go through. So well, I thought the deal was about, already done. Yeah, no. Let's talk about oh, that deal shit. for a second. So first of all, there is another deal out there. It is the Warner Brothers uh, uh, Time Warner 
and AT&T. AT&T is trying to buy Time Warner. It is still... It, this this deal started, like, over a year ago. It is still in, like, the legal government getting involved portion of it. Until that is resolved, the other one is not going to even be looked at. The other issue is that Comcast is making a bid for Fox as well. Now, this bid might just be to try and drive up the bid from Disney, or it might be a real serious bid. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The point is that this deal is probably not going to be fully completed, if it is at all, if it gets through all the other legal things, for at least another year, if not more. I'm not going to lie, I'd be so happy if the mouse did not get their hands on it. Well, and that's the thing. Like, as a fan of the comics, I want Disney to gain control of the characters that Marvel should all have under one roof. But it's not just Marvel that they would be taking control of. It's an entire empire that represents one sixth of all box office grosses currently available. True. Disney owns the mm-hmm. other six. Mm-hmm. If they get control of this, it means they own one third of all box office related film stuff. And that's a lot of control. I don't think I need to explain to people why that's a bad idea. It, it really is. And, and again, I do want them to own the Marvel portion of Fox. I absolutely do. But at the end of the day, I'm scared if they actually do gain control because it could mean a lot of changes that are not in the best uh, consumer, you know, us uh I can, Not the best for us. I understand. Well, me personally. Oh, go ahead, Brian. I'm sorry. Deadpool now has uh, pool noodles as swords. You can't have them have any sharp <laughs> objects. Uh, his guns are water guns. Uh, they have bright colors on them, so you know it's not a gun. Exactly right, yep. Uh, and his suit, there's no bulge. No bulge. <laughs> if there's a bulge, it's inappropriate. See, that I'm not actually worried about. I I don't think Disney, because they wouldn't incorporate Deadpool into the Disney name they would just leave they're not going to get rid if they control fox at some point they're not going to get rid of the fox logo they're going to keep that and use it like they used to use uh the hollywood uh uh, or touchstone or whatever other ones that they've owned through the years the other one they used to have back in the in the 80s and 90s for their non-disney releases was uh buena vista also hollywood too yeah they, they've owned a few over the years that they've all gone under because basically what happens is people know that they're owned by Disney and they get all incensed about how dare Disney put out something that is for adults. And Disney, meanwhile, face palms and says, please let us make something PG-13 or R-rated. Have I heard of a Disney movie called Pearl Harbor? <laughs> Wait, what? I, I believe yeah, Disney that was movie Buena Vista. I thought you were being a smart ass. Really? Wow. That would be hardcore to see. Not even the fact that it's Disney. I'm just being in general. Son of a bitch. Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm not a fan. A huge fan of Disney because I've seen things that they've done in the past I'm not a huge fan of. So I don't necessarily want them to have, uh, you know, uh, I don't want them to buy it. But I, obviously I can't stop anything because I'm not a huge rich motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> but I can still have my opinions, damn it. Um, yeah, $54 billion, good grief. Right, dude? Right? Jesus Christ. It, it makes it makes their purchase of Lucas Arts or, or Lucas in general, because they bought everything except, and this is something people forget, they bought everything except for Indiana Jones 5, but apparently they also acquired Indiana Jones 5 at some point after the fact. Really? Yeah, it, it was like the the one sticking point that Lucas was like, yeah, I'll, I'll sell you all of this. And uh, I don't remember the specific number, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 to $4 billion. And now looking at the Fox deal, it's like 
two to four billion is a drop in the bucket. God damn. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's goddamn. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Uh, Comcrap getting their hands on it. You know, I, I have my opinions of Comcast and what they've done to internet. Uh, but that's, once again, just an opinion. So I'm not exactly sure how I feel about them becoming a powerhouse more than they already are. But nevertheless, there you go. Yeah, it it gets it gets complicated. It gets businessy. You have to go deep diving, and I'm only deep diving enough to know what's going on on the surface level. But basically, it's going to be at least another year plus. So we're still going to get the next X Men movie from Fox. We're still going to get uh, New Mutants. Although they did push back New Mutants an entire year, which makes me worry. A little bit. Yeah. Because New Mutants looked like a very original project and getting pushed back an entire year, like I- I'm hoping that whatever's going on with New Mutants is like they looked at what's go- been going on with DC, they've looked at what's been going on with uh, the Star Wars stuff and they said, you know, we're not ready, we're just gonna polish this a little bit more and that's what's going on not like huge problems we don't know about yet that will come out later on tmz (laughs) well i actually i completely forgot about new mutants even happening so i guess i have no dog in this fight when it comes to this discussion well they only had the that one teaser trailer that made it look like a horror movie which that's what excites me the most about it like a superhero movie with a horror genre. I, I can't wait to see that. You know, we got we got the comedy from Deadpool. We got the the more serious drama from Logan. Uh, we got different variations of things from Marvel and and uh, DC. It, I like the idea that the superhero genre is a thing that is adaptable to other things. You know, that that we can have multiple variations of a superhero movie that just have, like, here's the horror one, here's the mystery one, here's the thriller, here's the drama, here's the comedy, with some superheroes. Because at some point, the Academy is going to have to take notice and start giving awards to some of these movies. Mm Mm-hmm. Like they did with Logan. I can't remember what it was nominated for, but it, it wasn't one of the big ones. But it was like you know, best something or other. Why is it the co- <clears throat> sorry, piece of chocolate in my mouth there? Why is the Academy so against superhero movies? I don't understand it. Because they're old. Like ne- most of the Academy is like over 50 they didn't grow up with comics when they were little so they don't give a fuck about comics now um they're also of a certain school of thought that says oh well this kind of movie can't possibly be good enough to win an award they always snub comedies like comedy is is one of those things they used to back Back in the old days, they used to actually have a category for best musical or comedy. Now, you can guess that no comedies won. It was always musicals. Um, Then it was best drama or whatever. Um, They got rid of that and it just became best picture. Now they have like a possible 10 nominations and they're, like, trying to expand... Blah, blah, blah. The point is, nobody watches the Academy Awards anymore. <laughs> well, you know. You know. <laughs> Obviously, there's a percentage of people who do. Just not as massive yeah, as it used to be. I, I do, but only if I remember. <laughs> You're like, oh, is that on again? Oh, fuck, I better watch. 
<laughs> yeah, that's how it, that's how it was this last one. I, I was like, "Oh right, that's on tonight. I'll watch it." The previous year, I was like, "Oh, I forgot to watch it." Oh well. You know, uh, one thing that's not going to get an award anytime soon, and I don't see it ever getting an award. I kind of hope it doesn't. Thundercats Roar, a bubbly remake of Thundercats for Cartoon Network. Why do we need to make everything bubbly? Right, right. Teen Titans Go wasn't that the remake? Yeah, that, the, the, the trash, the original Teen Titans. Everybody hates it except for the kids. Going, yeah, I like disagree. It. Really? I've heard nothing but horse shit about the new version. Everybody liked the old version, at least the comic book people and the the fans of Teen Titans. Where... That's such a radical departure. People can't understand it. I mean, there is a place for stupid humor. There is a place for it. People Deadpool. Are like... Uh, exactly. Pod, pod podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, personally, I find Teen Titans go hilarious, and it's and it's actually it has the the most uh, comic book references of any show. Period. Really, I tried watching it's, it. I just wanted to stab my face in with an ice pick. It's it's got okay. Here's a way to 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 kind of visualize it. Teen Titans Go is Teen Titans as seen through Beast Boy's eyes. Interesting. That could be a way to kind of visualize it, because, you know, uh, Beast Boy was always the funny one. True. Oh, um, it, it's just like, uh, it's not that I necessarily hate it because I'm a comic, like, oh, I loved it, it's a comic book. No, it's just, I looked at it, I was like, this does not look good. It was just stupid. I mean, you guys know my uh, feeling on stupid jokes, stupid humor. Uh, stoner flicks are just mind-boggling how they actually get people to watch. Uh, Deadpool is really about as far as I go into stupid humor because it's still funny. You still have to at least halfway think about it at times. Where Teen Titans Go was just like, oh my god, I could be smoking so much weed and still find this and still halfway follow this. That's a problem, man, if you're making it that dumb. Where I've seen, I've seen the preview for Thundercats Roar. I've seen everything. I've read everything about it. It looks just like another Teen Titans Go of going here. We'll give you an ounce. Smoke the entire thing. You'll still be able to follow along. Don't worry. Just sit down. And put your stupid cap on. Well, okay. As a person who used to actually watch Thundercats, and due to some foolish nostalgia looking back, I went back to see what I thought I remembered of Thundercats being good. Uh, it was not. The The series was terrible. It had way too much of that stupid uh, Snarf character who literally said his name over and over again. Um, the art was amazing. The animation was spectacular. But the show itself was really dumb. It was obviously just to sell uh, toys if they're going to do a, a reboot retelling type thing where they're making fun of how <laughs> dumb the Thundercats actually are in a way while also potentially telling funny stories I think it's a good idea I guess I disagree I thought the Thundercats themselves were a lot of fun to watch but of course, sure. When you're ten or or younger, I okay. I guess I could still sit down and enjoy it with my kids. I don't know. Maybe I'm just of the right set of mind, which means I'm an idiot to enjoy that type of well, stuff. But but you're know, enjoying it with your kids. That's a different level of enjoyment. Your kids are enjoying it, so you are channeling them. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of adults that enjoy things with their kids because their kids love it. And then later on, they like go, man, how did I enjoy that? Or, or they just perpetually channel it. You know, they, there's a different dynamic there. But watching something from just a pure standpoint of were the stories good? Was the, you know, this good? Was that good? He Man, as an example, the oh, He Man and the Masters of the Universe. The art in that was pretty subpar. It was classic, like, Hanna-Barbera style, reused frames, reused everything. But the at least in season one, 
the stories were actually pretty good. Whereas the art in Thundercats was amazing, but the stories were very weird and like what is going on? Like there was a there was an entire episode that I watched where they encountered these robot bears and it just, it, it was it just doesn't make sense. Like so much of that just doesn't make sense. I, okay, I get you there. I still one of my favorite versions of Thundercats was on Adult Swim, where they. Uh, uh, oh God, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, head guy. Lionel. Lionel, thank you. Lionel does the whole fucking sight beyond sight. Give me, you know, the whole fucking sight thing, and then. Uh, he looks at uh, the female Thundercat taking a piss. I was like, that's just fucking funny. That is just fucking funny. Because I was just like, how did they not, you know, you knew, you knew he was going to do something like that eventually. I mean, come on, well, what what guy, what, what you and, know. And, and if, funny. if you remember properly, so when in that, in the setup for that show, they all went into cryo sleep or whatever and then they woke up like years later, but Lion-O was a young kid when he went in, and he was a grown up when he came out with the mind of a kid because his cryopod thing was broken. And then they just kind of shrugged that particular story element under the rug later because they realized it was stupid. I don't remember that one. Holy shit, I can't believe I forgot about that one. Uh. <laughs> yeah, like I said, and and then the weird thing about they're fighting a guy that's a mummy? What? what? Yeah, uh, it's a mummy. Come on now, casual. It's just a mummy. Yeah, the, the whole thing was basically what that show was based around was a, uh, they still had the molds for various toys in a similar fashion to He-Man. In fact, I believe some of them are direct rip-offs of He-Man uh, molds, and they just wanted to reuse them in the, until they were no longer useful, so they created the Thundercats to sell the toys and, you know, say, oh, they're brand new! Basically, it was the same bodies with different paint jobs and new heads. Can I... Can that happen to me? I would. I, I want to sell a Stacy Kruger uh, <laughs> action figure. I'm just gonna get like a Jane Silent Bob one and just repaint it and go. There, it's Stacy now, just without a beard. That totally uh, works, right? You need to sell a Stacy Kruger Chia pet. <laughs> We're just a fucking beard growing. Can we get this to happen? Who do I have I to talk to at Chia Pet? I... Wait, no, there were ones with beards. Oh the fuck! Oh god, Bob the Duck Roberts. Dynasty! Oh, oh no, Rad! No, no! <laughs> oh no! I already hear enough Duck Dynasty jokes when I wear a fucking baseball cap on stream. Okay, I don't need. Uh, hey, you can get a fucking Duck Dynasty chia pet and grow a beard, Stacy. How about that? Yeah. No, uh, you, you 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 get one of those. Um, and you put, like, uh, Willow Moss on his head for the long hair. <laughs> God damn it. You know, uh, we can make this happen. Are you guys down? Let's do this. No? No, no one? No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Casual, we what? haven't talked about gaming much lately at all. Today it's all been TV shows and movies especially. Um, there's... Uh, you know, uh, a game that's being re-released, Praise the Sun edition of, uh, excuse me, Praise the Money edition of Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, apparently, you can get Blight Town to run at 60 FPS, which if you had a PC, you could already make that happen because of... Well, uh, sort of. Well, you could the most part. ladders real fast if you did it. True, very true. But yeah, they're re-releasing it, and the only edition that gets... Uh, 1080p is on the Switch, but not on the PC, because, you know, fucking, that was a great selling point, you fucking idiotic cunts. But, <clears throat> apparently, yeah, Blight Town can run at 60 FPS. Now, who out of us is going to go buy 
Dark Souls Remastered just because Bright, Blight Town can run it at 60 FPS. Uh, I looked into that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the latest uh, give me more money edition of whatever's coming out. And nothing in it makes me want to purchase it again. Like, like it's similar to Skyrim whatever super deluxe extra special edition that came yeah. out that Fortunately, because I already own the game, Bethesda was smart enough to say, if you already bought this game, here, have a free version of this, you know, super legendary yeah. whatever edition. Well, I played that version. It is no different than the original. The exactly. only thing that I could see that was different was that the load times were actually slower I mean, sure, there was a few points that looked a little bit prettier, but us PC guys were already like, yeah, we already had a mod for that. What's your fucking point? Right. That you Like, for people that cared about that, you already had, like, a million mods for making the game prettier. Exactly. So that didn't do anything. I was thinking, oh, well, maybe they've fixed some quests. No, I ran into the one of the first quests I did that I knew was broken, still broken. Uh, still having the same stupid crashing issues. Again, load time slower. Now, maybe because uh, Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition was uh, not the best port, and even the people that made it, they were like, yeah, we know it's not the best port, we're sorry, we did the best we could, blah, blah, blah. Well, Obviously, they didn't do the best they could because that's the whole point of Praise the Sun Edition is, look, we made a better version of the game you all love. (coughs) Uh, But here's my issue. It doesn't offer anything new. Right? I think the biggest thing that pisses me off is that even like you pointed out, even Bethesda was like, yeah, no problem. You bought it before. Here you go. You get it for free. People who owned it before. Thank you very much for buying it before. We fixed it. Quote, unquote, fixed it. No, they didn't. It still had all the same fucking bugs. But still, at least they were willing to give it to you for free. Where From Software has been a bunch of cunts, which I get. It sounds very entitled of us. Very, very entitled. Well, maybe. Maybe I'll just say that it's entitled because, god damn it, we well, paid for this motherfucker already. But, but again, if... Okay, so they kind of did the same thing with Dark Souls 2. They released uh, the Sins of something, whatever, oh, for yeah. Dark Souls 2. Yep. But and when the they did the first that, dollar. Yep. there you go. When they did that, though, they didn't exactly add any new areas. It was all the same areas, but they changed up enemy placement. And you might say, oh, wh- what does that do? In that game... Everything. Mm-hmm. It it they put some harder level enemies into areas that you weren't expecting. They changed up certain placements of standard enemies that you know. It made the entire game feel different. Now, if they were to do that with this version of the game, I might be like, okay. But so far, all the information I've seen on it, it's just sixty <clears throat> FPS. And look at how pretty we can make the game, and it's a better port. Okay, I, I, first of all, I personally don't care about the 60 FPS. I am perfectly fine playing. I've, I have played games for three decades in lower FPS, and I am perfectly fine continuing to play them in 30 FPS. So that's not a selling point for me. Like, like, what what else do you have to offer? Me, personally, I'm, I, I'm not going to lie. Me, I was just like, finally, 60 FPS, because maybe I'm just a snob, but it, when it's not at 60 FPS, you can feel the difference. You can really Oh, yeah, you it. can. I, do, I don't disagree with that, but the point is that why am I going to pay? Now, they are giving discounts for those that already own Prepare to Die Edition. That was a big gripe of mine saying they needed that, but I I, I, 
It's still not enough, man. Yeah, no, it's not because there's you know it's it's still like what thirty bucks if on discount or 20. whatever. Like, okay, whatever. It's it's still not worth it to me. Like, I wouldn't pay five dollars for it if there's no new content. Like, change up the enemy placements. That would be enough for me, honestly. Having played Scholar of the First Sin. That really is enough to be like, whoa, this is so much harder now. But otherwise, you know, meh. The only thing I'm really thankful for is the fact that they did not change. They're not going to change the mechanics to Dark Souls 3. I'm so thankful. Oh, that, w- that would have pissed me off. Because right? one of the reasons I like Dark Souls 1 is for the way, uh, what do you call it? Uh, poise works. Yeah, that's exactly it. Although I do have to say, I kind of wish they would have made poise a bit more like Dark Souls two than Dark Souls one. I, I I actually agree. I think poise in Dark Souls two was was the best version of it. Yeah, but that's you know half of one hand, you know a half a dozen one yeah. hand, six another, you know kind of thought process. But either way, um, am I going to buy it? Probably not. If somebody buys it for me, am I going to play it? Probably just to see. Am I looking forward to the fucking Rage Quit Twins again? Fuck no. Uh, <laughs> just calling back. Well, I don't think anybody looks forward to Fatty and Slim. They right. they are... They, that, I would say that's kind of one of my issues with the later uh, games in the franchise is Fatty and Slim and Artaurus. I think that's his name. They were the benchmark that everybody was like, oh my god, did you did you get to the Artorus fight? That was so epic. Mm-hmm. And after that, all they did in future games is instead of making everybody slow, which <clears throat> I will admit most of the bosses were slow in Dark Souls 1, they just made them all super fast instead. And then in Dark Souls 3, the thing they learned from Dark Souls 1 is people thought that the hardest bosses were the ones that had multiple versions throughout the fight. So then in Dark Souls 3, it was every boss had, like, at least two transformations on the way to killing it. That's, I mean, yeah, (laughs) it's harder, but it's, it's not variety, which I kind of liked Dark Souls 2 variety a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Oh, I, uh, I'm i of the minority. I found out that really loved Dark Souls 2. I loved Dark Souls 2. I, unfortunately, oh, I like I, all three of them. Well, I know, I'm, 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 in that case, we are the minority, should I say. Uh, Dark Souls 3 was my least favorite out of all of them. I Dark Souls one and two I will go back to play again. Dark Souls three once I'm finally once I finally get myself to go back to it to finish it I'll never go back, unless I can find a mod that changes it down to its skivvies or just go into the files and change certain things. I don't see me ever going back because it was just changed so much. It just yeah, wasn't I, for me. I, can I mean, see that. you know it's great and, and a lot of people loved it for what it was and that's okay. It just wasn't for me. That's all. Nothing else. Okay. I, I, didn't I get you to try Dark... No, I got you to try Bloodborne. Yeah. <laughs> Casual? Dude, he didn't get past... Cause you watched a couple of people play, didn't you, Casual? I watched a bunch of people play Bloodborne. It was like all there was on Twitch for a while. Uh, Rad, I know you don't own a PS4, correct? That would be correct. I own a PS4 minus one. Jesus Christ. Okay, so you haven't played it either. Uh, you've watched people play it. Uh, do you remember the very... Yes, yours truly. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I did watch... I did play that game. God damn, that fucking game. Um, do you remember the very beginning area where... Uh, God. It's not even at the first boss. It's just where that first huge bonfire area is where everybody gets up to. He couldn't even get up to that because he kept turning around to go after this fatty motherfucker in the very back area where you didn't have to fight him. But he heard him, so he uh, had to go fight him. That fucker will it, die. Yeah, the optional thing that that is like hilariously good for leveling up is like it's only for those who have played the game before, pretty much. Yep. Uh, he didn't know that you didn't have to fight him. He didn't know until just now, actually, when I just told him because I refused to spoil it. 
he has refused to go back to Bloodborne because of this guy. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I know uh, that feeling. Uh, you refuse to go back to Bloodborne, but for a different reason. That motherfucking game. <clears throat> All right. Uh, <laughs> remember when you had to fight? Uh, casually, remember when uh, the player had to fight the um, the hell the, the the old guy in the graveyard at the I, Hunter's Dream? I honestly don't remember anything about that game other than it has a great looking aesthetic. But okay. I don't own a PS4, so I never got a chance to play it and didn't really pay much attention. I understand that. Okay. Uh, well, the old um, guy... Oh, go ahead. I can explain it. But please do. Will, okay. So at the end of the game, there's, you know, you, you do some fights, you go back to see see some dude at, like, the starting area or your, your, like, main hub section, and he asks you, do you wish to wake up? And you literally have to have to answer yes or no. A, a mechanic I would like to point out that seems way simpler than you think until you've played through Dark Souls 1 and you've answered yes and no to so many questions that the story has completely changed. That's casual. This right here is where you fucked me. Because I listened to casual and he taught me that remember he's like, hey Stace, don't worry about answering those fucking things. They don't matter. I learned from casual and I just took it for granted going, "Ah, I don't need to worry about these ones. I did not say that. What I said was that most of them don't really matter for the most part, but there, I, I, I specifically pointed out in dark souls one, at least there was one question that you have to really think about answering because it changes everything. But what I'm saying is like the first time I played the game, I w- having seen Dark Souls 1 so many times, I was like, oh, this game is so simple. This is going to be easy. And then I started to get into it, and then I was like, shit, why can't I find this one guy that I always see everybody talking to? And then it turns out that some freaking question I answered yes to, like, or or a path that I took has changed the way that certain people appeared and oh nope they're dead now yeah so me just mindlessly going do you want to wake up I thought it was part of the storyline of just going oh yeah I guess it's the next step in the movie uh, next step in the movie sorry next step in the game where you just wake up okay yeah sure do you really want to yeah let's just wake up let's get the story going I want to beat the game because with Dark, with Bloodborne it wasn't about the story it was about the fun of the action you don't play Bloodborne because, oh my god, could you believe that thrilling plot? To this day, I can't remember shit about the story. But I remember how fun the gameplay was. So I was like, okay, yep, yep, let's just go, let's just go. All of a sudden, game over. Wait, whoa, 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 what? If it was Skyrim, you could go back to an old save. But no, it's Bloodborne. I had to start over new. There's a reason I haven't gone back to this fucking game. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't want to do all that work again. I, yeah, oh. I can see that. I was. I, oh. I enjoyed. I enjoyed Dark Souls one enough that once I found out that I had missed a bunch of stuff because I did like so on my very first playthrough, I did not go to Blight Town through the entrance that most people take, which is the you know you go down through all of the. Uh, I can't remember what they call that area where all the thieves are that are trying to kill you and and then you go down into the Suri place with the big chef guy and you fight the big rat oh, and yeah. you fight the big dragon. I on my first playthrough skipped all of that. You too, huh? Because I didn't even know about it because I couldn't find the key because I didn't fight one boss because of reasons, reasons, reasons. I went the back way and ended up being like, holy crap, this game's difficulty ramps up so quickly. Because <laughs> I went yeah. from fighting, oh, I think the, the the boss I fought was the one on top of the tower? The gargoyles? No, yeah. Yeah. I think. And then the very next boss I fought was uh, the Spider Queen. And I was like, holy 
crap, this is like, like I was doing damage before, now I'm doing nothing, and she's spitting love, and she's so fast, and what's going on? I actually quit for a while, went back, beat her, went through the whole game, and everybody kept talking about these areas that, oh, did you, what did you think about this, and what did you think about that? I missed the entire hollow tree. Yep, same here. I missed all of that area that leads up to Blight Town, and then I beat the game, and I was like, wow, that was an amazing game. Once I found out all the things I missed, I was like, okay, I have to go through this game again. See, um, if it hadn't been for casual folks, I would have missed the Hollow Tree completely, because I just used my, I picked, I was building my character for the very first time, and it was a completely blind playthrough, we were banning people left and right for telling me what to do. You know, and trying to say, like, hey, don't forget to grab bait. And I was, like, purposely ignoring chat. Thankfully, to my amazing mods, they were, like, being dicks in chat. I loved it. But, um, so we're sitting there banning, banning, banning. I was like, okay, what the hell is this? A fucking, a key? A master key? I'm like, I'll take a master key. Oh, no, a skeleton key. Whatever. I was like, I'll take yeah. that. Hell yeah. So I took that, and I'm just doot doot wander around. I'm like, oh, look, a gate. I can unlock this thing. And I'm running around like a dumbass, having a blast of a time. And all of a sudden, Blight Town pops up. I'm like, oh, I remember everybody talking about this place. It's not so bad. And then, because um, I was talking about the performance-wise, because, you know, I use a wonderful thing called DS Fix. Oh, amazing. Fucking Dark Souls and Remastered. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> but I'm walking through, and I'm like, oh, this isn't so... Oh, my God, I just got squished. And I was like, this place sucks. So I left the whole area. I went through by pure chance... And got to that um, gate after I beat, uh, what is the spider's name? Uh, uh, Quelag. Quelag, thank you. After I ended up finally beating Quelag, I went back and was like, I'm just going to go level a little bit and just explore a little bit on air. And I found the gate. I was like, the hell is this gate all about? Oh, shit. Yeah. I could get through here now? <laughs> I, I did the, okay. So on my first playthrough, I did the same thing. After I, I, I like... Because I'm an explorer, so I started exploring. So essentially, I went the backwards way all the way up to the gate that you're supposed to initially enter Blight Town from. Yeah. You know, the, the big one from the sewers. And because you can't get through that gate unless you go through the sewers, I reached the gate... I saw people on the other side because there's the little shopkeeper dude that sits there until oh, you get to yeah. a certain point. And I was like, why is there so much stuff I can't get to? What a weird game. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, God. And then, you know what? Going back and going the proper way, it made so much more sense uh, enemy-wise. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, so... if you go the right way, you're like, oh, the progression actually makes a lot more sense. And to this you know, day, there's still one bonfire I miss every time because I completely bypass it through the proper entrance to Blight Town, and you have to go through. And I was going, wow, I have to go so long before I get to a bonfire, like in like some like little uh, sewer thing. I was like, God, that sucks. And everybody's like, Stacy, I missed a bonfire. What? Oh yeah, because you have to like. Uh break down a secret door or yep. something. There's a couple of those. I missed I missed the one in the forest. Uh like right before you get to the gate that leads to Sif. There's a secret wall there and I missed it on my first playthrough. I missed it on my second playthrough. On my third playthrough, I didn't know about it still, but I saw this glow and I was like what is behind this? And then I revealed it, and I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> right, dude? You know, okay, that's a great question for you. I, and you know what? Uh, I guess it's just me and you'll be answering this one. Um, who is your favorite Dark Souls boss? Of all, by three, far, uh, all four of them, technically. By far, still fatty and slim, because it's the one boss that retains its challenge even years later. Like, I can, I have gone in and beat them on the first try once. I hate you. Once, mind you. And then I have gone in on a second playthrough, and it took me three days to beat them. And then I have gone in and I beat them in three tries. 
like like they are so frustrating because if, if I were a speedrunner, and they are speedrun enders too. Mm, if I were a speedrunner, I would hate them because the consistency is not there. And that's actually why I love them as a casual player because I never know what's going to happen in that fight. Am I going to need to summon uh, somebody to help me? Am I going to just do it on my own? Uh, How is this going to work, you know? I I, I I can only think of maybe three times ever beat Fatty and Slim without some help, whether it be NPC or not. I am a pathetic, not get gooder. Uh, yeah, that's a word. Let's just go with it. Uh, Dark Souls player. I am terrible at the game, but I love it. Now, you know, I can't disagree with you on Fatty and Slim being the best one of them. Because you're right, they do really retain the um, challenge, but I have to say that Sith. Uh, not Sith, uh, Skeleton, uh, the one that's made of all the different corpses. What the hell was his name? <sighs> uh, one that doesn't Skeletor. fit into the story. What was it? Uh, he's totally named Skeletor. <laughs> uh, he doesn't fit into the story whatsoever. He just kind of got shoehorned into the story. Me and you were discussing this one day on air. Like years of like years ago, but now what? That was Nito, right? Yeah, Nito, Neil, Nito or Neo, one of the two. Yeah, Nito, Nito. Yes, N E N E T O, Nito. I can't help but just love him because he was such a fun boss fight to me. I don't know why he he was not super difficult, but he was fun. I mean, they brought him back in a fleshy version of a similar boss in Dark Souls Two. I don't remember it's... that one. Uh, it's basically the exact same fight, only is covered in fle- it's it's a bunch of bodies all amalgam together, only they're fleshy, and it's it's not neato, but okay. it's like you know the boss is so similar that I was oh, like, oh, sounds neato good. got some skin, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's another one. Now, I think I might know which one you're gonna say, but of all four Dark Souls. And I have a funny feeling. I know which one it is. I'm not going to say anything, but I have a funny feeling. Who is your least favorite Dark Souls boss of all four? Fatty and Slim. <laughs> God damn it. See, I was expecting uh, the shitty boss. Uh, the one where you can, if you know what you're doing, you can just one-shot him. He's like the dumbest boss of them all. Uh, well, you can't one-shot him. I'd, uh, um, pin. Not Pin. Pin. Pinwheel uh, or nope, something. Not pinwheel. Uh, it's the one that's a fucking huge tree. The floor oh. What's his name? Um. Yeah. No, that is definitely the worst one. And and Bandai Namco has even said that they like they were trying something, it didn't work out, and they didn't have enough time to change it. But that is the most RNG boss that you can possibly find. Uh, that's also a speedrun ender. Like, uh, if you don't do it just right, that can end your speedrun right there. Because there's, like with most bosses, there is a way to avoid their attacks. But not with that boss. If you are in the range, it will hit you. It doesn't matter how much your evasion is. It doesn't matter what your poise is. It will hit you. It will knock you down. And the second thing is the field of play disappears as you do damage to it, Mm -hmm. like turns into a pit that you fall in, and there's no indicator for where that will happen. So on every level, it's a terrible boss. And then once you defeat the two things on the side and you go through the center, you literally just stab it with, like, your weakest dagger and it dies and then and you like, stop you go that's it yeah, that's all you can it, say too is fuck me <laughs> worst boss in the whole franchise yep all right. absolutely casual let's wrap this up with uh and i think all of us guys can we actually talk about this because i th- all of us actually know something about this instead of just me and you dominate with dark souls uh avengers <laughs> And um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I've never seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It just didn't really seem too tempting to me. But Avengers. Let's talk. Let's chat, guys. Let's rap. 
That was the worst so, hipster thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Let's all sit in a circle and rap, guys. <laughs> so, okay. So we've we've all seen Avengers at this point. The Infinity War at the very least. Mm-hmm. Um, and we all know how it ends. I now, don't feel so good. <laughs> back... Back when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was first announced, this was post the first Avengers movie. I made a prediction because it was being done on ABC, which is parented by Disney. Uh, And that prediction was that this series, no matter how good or bad it is, is going to last until the last Avengers movie in the, you know, current cycle. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that they were going to do at least three Avengers, and it should be noted, that was actually the original plan at the time, was three Avengers movies, not four, but whatever. I said, I said, yeah, I guarantee you that this Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., no matter how good or bad it is, is going to, they're going to keep it running just because of the plan that they had in place, which was, we're going to make it connect to the movies. Now, first of all, I'd like to say, I was right, I was right, I was right. But what ended up happening is completely outside of the reason that I was right. Uh, The reason that it continues to exist is... First season, first eight episodes, they're not bad, but they're not special. As the show has progressed, this show has gotten better and better and better. To the point where I, like every episode, it's one of those shows where I'm like, I can't wait to see what they do with the next episode. Oh my word, how are they going to get out of this situation? You know, it's it's classic TV serial where you <clears throat> really can't wait to see the next episode. You know, mm-hmm. it's like how people feel about Game of Thrones and stuff. The problem is, it's the best show nobody's watching. Now, Is it really getting I that wish... low ratings? Well, no. I mean, it's getting decent ratings, but they aren't, like, blowing the doors off of the ratings machine or whatever. Uh, like, like there are people, plenty of people watching it, and ever, almost everyone that watches it, I say almost because there's always a few that don't like anything, they will say the same thing. They will say, oh, my God, I can't believe how good this show has become. Now, some will point to the second half of the first season where it got good. Some, like me, point to a specific episode mark. Others will say it was after the events of Winter Soldier that changed everything that made it better. Whatever the case, this show has been great. Now, their connection to the movies, and this is important, has over time lessened. The reason it has lessened is because it's really hard to make connections to the movies when a movie is on about a three-year cycle. Like, it takes three years to make a movie from its inception to finally releasing in the theaters. And that's, that's you know, a pretty average timetable. It takes one year to make 22 episodes of a TV show. So you can see how the two constantly meshing would be a problem. Yeah. They did their best. The first season definitely was directly tied to everything. I mean, they literally, based on air dates of the first season, they did Thor The Dark World. I know, not the best season, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came in the next day like that because it used to air on Tuesdays the Tuesday after Thor the Dark World was in theaters they were cleaning up the mess from Thor the Dark World like the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. were going to London to clean up the spaceship debris and and take it all so that people couldn't get a hold of it Uh, Winter Soldier 
happened where one episode they did a big reveal of the of one of the characters being a secret not a shield agent winter soldiers reveal of hydra happened and the very next episode the to be continued hydra is taking over and the shield agents have to deal with it they did not do so much of that in the later seasons, which is fine. Uh, they made little little mentions of things like, for instance, when Peggy Carter died in Civil War. They did like a memorial of that in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, when the helicarrier reappeared in Age of Ultron, they did a whole episode where, oh, it was the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that re built the helicarrier from the first movie the third the or the fourth season no connection at all really? but this fifth season <clears throat> which i wasn't expecting a connection so i'm gonna spoil some things from season five uh, if you're not watching it you're not gonna care anyway if you are watching it you've already seen it the fifth season opens with them having done some stuff they're sitting in a diner waiting to be captured by the government and then they get teleported to a space station and they're like what the f what's going on the space station as it turns out is not a space station it's a deep core like um what do you call it um like a like a fallout shelter like oh. from Fallout. Okay. It's it's like this thing that was built to withstand any potential uh, catastrophe that, that the Earth suffers from. So that humanity will survive. Turns out, it did survive. The entire Earth exploding. <clears throat> it's 70 years in the future... And they are stuck on this space station with a bunch of people being run by aliens. Uh, everybody is scared of dying. Blah, blah, blah. Time travel occurs. They go back in time to stop the Earth from exploding. The reason why the Earth explodes is not important. What is important is the reason that one of the characters is trying to become an all-powerful god is Thanos is coming. Really? Now, this is the first time that the series has been back to directly connecting to the movies in a long time. And as the series progressed, the big question is, are they going to do the end of Infinity War, half the people turning into dust, or are they not? Well, again, spoilers, they didn't. But... From a story perspective, essentially what happens at the end of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. all happens before the finger snap. They have come out after the show, after the final episode aired, and they have confirmed, the, the creators of the show all confirmed that yes, this does take place in the continuity. We're not doing some weird time travel, caused a new alternate universe, and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. exist there. This is all happening before Thanos snapped his finger. Now, this series, this season, was also clearly supposed to be the last season. If you watch enough TV shows like this, you start to see the signs. Yeah. People die, uh, big story points are revealed, people come back back that weren't there for years you know there's there's certain elements of a tv show where you're like oh this is the last season the last episode was literally called the end <laughs> bum, bum, However, bum. <laughs> and this is where things to me get very interesting it has been renewed for a mid-season 13-episode replacement sixth final season. Now, what that really? means, if you don't know what that means, it means it's going to air during the summer instead of during the typical wintry time frame that most shows air. 
it's only going to be 13 episodes, which is a little over half the episodes that they normally do. And it's going to be taking place right before Avengers 4 comes out. No shit, huh? Now, as a fan of the show, I am both excited and anxious about this. Because I'm excited, obviously, because more Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. But I am anxious because are they going to deal with the... I, I feel like this is going to be the show. This is going to be the season everyone that liked Infinity War should watch. Because what this season should be is the aftermath of the finger snap. Like, what happens to a world where half the people just turn to dust? We're not going to get that answer with Ant-Man and the Wasp, because that all takes place before the finger snap. We're not going to get the answer in Captain Marvel, because that takes place in the 90s for the most part. We're not going to get that answer in Avengers 4, because they're going to be dealing with how to fix it, not the aftermath, because they only have two hours. So I feel like what they're doing, at least I hope, is that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. final season is just going to be after the snap of the fingers. What happens to a world? Like, how do people in that world deal with it? How? What? What is going on? You I didn't know, know and there I was am... going to be a Captain uh, Marvel movie. Actually, that's the very first time I heard of it. Like, yeah, I knew she was going to be part of... Uh, um... Avengers, but, you know, well, the next Avengers Yeah, they're, they're doing the movie first. And the other thing that gives me some interest is they have mentioned a potential spoiler that uh, the character of Coulson, who's been on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for years, he was in the first few of uh, movies leading up to the Avengers where he died. Mm -hmm. He's going, his origin, along with Nick Fury's loss of his eye, is going to be in Captain Marvel. So that like like all of these things have me so excited for what happens next and worried. <laughs> and worried. I don't know, it it, it, it should be fun. Well, that, that's a I question hope... I have. Are they going to be doing a female Captain Marvel or a male because Yeah, I've heard it's both. definitely it's definitely female Captain Marvel. It's uh okay. I can't remember uh, I want to say Kara Danvers, but that's Supergirl. Okay, so what, if I remember correctly, weren't there both a male and female Captain Marvel in the comics? Uh, Captain Marvel is a title like the Green Lantern. It's been passed mm. on okay, from, sounds good. from person to person. And essentially, she is the Green Lantern of the Marvel Universe. She's like the power cosmic and blah, blah, blah. So, okay. you know. I don't know the full story. I do know that they're already planning to do a potential Ms. Marvel movie, which is, uh, like, so <laughs> Captain Marvel is Ms. Marvel only after she's gone through some changes. Ms. Marvel, one of them was eventually what turned into a bad person and was killed by Rogue in the 80s into the 90s. Uh, it's very complicated comic book wise. Mm -hmm. I don't know what version they're going to go with. I'm sure it's going to be good because Marvel movies have generally been good since they started with Iron Man. So I know we're pretty long winded in this one, but here's my question for you about some late, uh, some comic book news that came out. Uh, we're going to get the very first uh, Muslim comic book hero. That's Ms. Marvel. That is Ms. Marvel. That's okay. what they're talking about. Why? Uh, which, which, Maybe, like I said, this is one of those things. Kevin Feige, they have. I, I looked at the the list of Marvel movies coming out. They stopped titling them, mm -hmm. but it says Marvel movie number nine. You know, up to two thousand twenty two. So it's not like they're going to stop making these things after Avengers four. Yeah, they are going to keep making these things until they stop making money. Okay, here's my question for that though is why do we need that? Uh, we, we as a population have been trying to move towards 
less self-identifying, more saying we are just a humankind. Not what makes us different, but what makes us the same. Why would we want this now? And also, because... is it important? Yes. Unfortunately, it is important. It's important to have more diversity in the movies because the movies have been dominated for like seven decades by white people. Not just white well... people, white Christian males, you know. And over the last couple decades, there has been more diversity, but it's still, you know, like let's let's do a little head count here the only uh female in the marvel universe for a long time was black widow uh they're still talking about a black widow movie i still think it's a mistake not that i don't want her to have her own thing i think she needs a series but that's a whole other topic um here's where my challenge for that would come in um i don't remember uh any of the Captain, uh, excuse me, any of the uh, comic book heroes being of any religion. I don't remember that at all. So maybe well, that's I'm wrong because about that. we That's because you don't read comics currently. Oh, okay. like, like the in the 90s up and, and that, again, that's, that's kind of the reason why we need it now is because <sighs> you and me, especially, we are of the older generation that we try not to be racist and in theory we aren't but <laughs> i love our, only be- we try not to well the it, the only reason that we aren't is because you and me specifically and there's plenty of us out there but mm-hmm. of our generation we just didn't care mm-hmm. like we we had a black guy in our class in school and he was just another friend yeah exactly. uh, you know, we, we had like like we we had a chick that we really liked, and she happened to be Asian. Who cares? She's just she's a chick. Yeah. You know, but but our gener you and me type of people are of a minority of our generation who happen to not care. As we are literally in a transition period in human history, you and me think that all of this doesn't matter and to a point I agree but it does matter for the future in order to get to the point where nobody cares about race and religion and all this stuff we have to get past this point where we are specifically putting it into our movies that oh this character is gay and this character is Muslim and this character is Asian and this character blah 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 so that we can get to the point where nobody cares anymore and it just becomes another element of a movie you know and and it also has to be done right for example the thing in Deadpool 2 Mm -hmm. where she said she's my girlfriend douche that's all they did about it like they didn't show them like making out they didn't like focus on their relationship being gay they just they just were and they made mention of it it right you're absolutely right exactly and if they do the whole muslim thing right for a ms marvel movie that it'll just be a part of her character like It'll come out at some point in the story, but it won't be a major thing. And that's how you do it right. You just, you put it in there, but you don't make it a major plot point. You do the rest of the movie as the major plot point, and then, oh yeah, she's also Muslim. And that's leading towards more diversity in a good way. I I, I can understand what you're saying there. At the same time, though, I'm just like, who gives a fuck what a religion is? You know, I can understand I, the I race by part, the race, the race part of it, and the gender part of it, but the religion part of it, I just it's like I don't really see it. Yeah. Of course, I'm also non-religious, so I guess maybe to me, I'm kind of skewed on that view. <laughs> uh, uh, I would, I would like to point out as as we get close to potentially closing out. Yeah, we need to. Uh, Infinity eventually. War has made 1.8 billion dollars and the reason that's important is that it beat Jurassic World and it is up there <laughs> higher than Jurassic World. Are we any of us World. really that surprised that Jurassic World of all things didn't make a shit ton of cash? 
uh, like, Jurassic compared World to did, this, should I say? No, did ma- that's the problem. Jurassic World was number four all time box office. Bullshit, really? And Avengers Infinity War beat it this last weekend. Oh, I had no idea, actually, dude. Are you Very fucking important. kidding me? That that now, fucking now we movie? need another movie to beat it so that it's no longer in the top five. Then we need something to beat it so it's no longer in the top ten. Ryan, get I, Jurassic I, World out! I'm getting the video camera. You're gonna pit fart on a snare drum for an hour and a half, and we're gonna <laughs> fucking beat out Jurassic Park. Sound good? All right. Uh, and <laughs> Deadpool two, three hundred million dollars. That's it right now. Really? That's first weekend. I mean, True. that's pretty good for first weekend. True. It's just maybe, well, like I said, dress, uh, d- d- Deadpool 2 did pale in comparison to the first one, so I should expect it to be less than the, uh, a little less, but it's still, you know. Well, hmm. it's it's actually more than the first one. Really? First weekend. I thought the Keep first one mind. made more than that. No. I mean, overall, yes. But this is just first weekend. Now, here's here for those that care. I'm one of the few, I know. But here's what happens over the next few weeks. The reason Infinity War probably won't make $2 billion is because Deadpool 2 just came out. The reason that Deadpool 2 is going to start seeing potentially some faltering in whatever box office it makes is because Solo comes out soon. Then oh, so after that, uh, there's Incredibles 2. There's that movie with The Rock. I know you don't like him, but a lot of people do. Uh, there's the um, what's the, the latest Mission Impossible movie. Basically, every weekend, w- another big, quote, blockbuster is coming out this summer. Speaking like, of fucking Mission Impossible 2, how the fuck is fucking uh, Space Ghost ass motherfucker still getting fucking rolls? Especially as Mission Impossible, dude. Holy shit. How old is this son of a bitch now? Old enough. Uh, he's approaching 50, I think. No way, only 50? 50. 50? He turned 50 on the set of uh, Oblivion. Really? Oh, okay. I thought he was so in his 60s like, he's already. Like 50. He's like 52, I think. I In case anybody doesn't know who we're talking about, Tom Cruise. I, fuck me. I really thought he was older than that. He, I will say that he's one of those people that has the baby face thing where he looks younger than he is. Mm-hmm. But he does, he can't play a 30-year-old anymore. He he doesn't look 50, but he definitely is starting to see some of the lines and, and wrinkles that put him in his 40s. Son of a bitch. I had no idea he was... So, even once again! I mean, how? How? I mean, I guess because he's Tom Cruise and just like so many other people out there, well, just put him in there. He'll fucking make a knockout because of his name kind of people in a movie. But I just... I figured they would have moved on from him by this point, kind of like what they did with uh, uh, James Bond. Different Bonds. Well, yeah, I think that... uh, the. One of the things you're failing to take into account is that Tom Cruise is one of the producers on Mission Impossible since the second one. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, I had no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, uh, it's it's his, uh, something dance films. It's his production company. Okay. That makes a lot more sense, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not a fan of him, personally. I don't think he's a... I, I don't like his acting style. I, I don't... Like a lot of what he's done, that, that, uh, that's fair. Funny. I I I kind of agree. There there was one movie that made me actually respect him as an actor, but um, but generally speaking, he plays the same role since he was a kid. Yeah, you know? yeah, but yeah, that's just which is me. that slightly douchey. I'm good at everything. Role. There's that what what's that that one fucking uh, where uh, oh uh, Iron Man. Uh, Robert uh, Robert, Robert Downey Jr. played a black guy. What movie was that again? Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. He's uh, actually good Tropic in that Thunder. one. Yeah, he was hilarious in that movie. I mean, that's one uh, of the few I, times he's actually good. I gotta be honest, I think he was the best part of that movie. I don't want to say yes because I don't like Tom Cruise, but I... <laughs> <laughs> But you no, kind he, he of agree. Part. Yeah. God damn you, casual. You son of a bitch. Uh, no, that, 
there I can't remember what movie it was that I saw of his because I've seen a lot of his movies and I as much as I I am not the kind of person that doesn't see a movie just because the actor in it might not be my favorite because if I did that I wouldn't have seen a lot of really fun movies they need to be me. like but <laughs> but there was one movie and I really can't remember what it was but that Tom Cruise played against type. He was down to earth, like like he wasn't the like I can do everything really good and I'm kind of a prickmeister, um, and it just it made me realize he does have talent. But part of the reason that he is in so many movies that he's playing the same character is because that's all anybody wants to hire him for. Like they they know he can do that role really well, so they just. He, those are the offers he gets. It makes sense. <clears throat> and if you're an actor and you want to make a lot of money, yeah, you take the same role over and over again. I I find your niche and get good at it. So kind of like if somebody was going to hire me for a movie, they'd get a guy that who swears a lot and is just completely obscene. Uh, that, that's the pretty kind much. of role they'd hire me for. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they, there, there oh. is such a thing as typecasting. We we have to comment on one thing from Deadpool two before we go. All right, what? Baby legs. <laughs> Did you see the penis? That was the funniest. Like, okay, so a lot of comments have said kind of the what I'm about to say. It was weird at first, especially since they weren't actually showing it; they were just mentioning it. Oh, I was. Then when they. Then when they actually showed it, I was like, oh, that's just creepy. Then they showed certain anatomy parts, and I was like, really? Come on. And I started to lose the joke, but then he got up. Uh-huh. I was like, okay, this is the funniest scene in the whole movie. I love it. Uh, it's just so dumb. I I kind of hope, like, like, it topped the baby hand thing from the first one. <laughs> By far. I just hope they don't do that joke again in the third one. Because it was funny in this one, and it was funny in the first one, but how do you top baby legs? Right, dude, and honestly, the the, the baby cock was, to me, some of the funniest shit. Because <laughs> it was just like a slimy finger sticking out between his legs. I was like, oh, God, the fuck is wrong with you guys? That's amazing. That's just still, I mean, everything... Oh, there were so many good points that movie that even got the dull moments where I was going, okay, we get it. You're a Deadpool movie. That it even <laughs> made good on that. All right, we need to wrap up the podcast. Thank you so much for swinging in, all of everybody who's listening today. Boys, thank you very much for being here. I've been Stacy Kruger. Who the hell have you boys been? I'm Ryan Midstretch. The silent partner. <laughs> yeah. We need to get. I'm going to start digging out his taser, and every time he doesn't talk for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I have been Rad Hazard, your local fly on the wall. <laughs> I have been casually challenged, and hopefully I continue to be. I don't see you ever changing, my friend. Thank you so much for swinging in to do the podcast with us once again, guys. Everybody who's tuned in today, thank you so much for being here. And T-Dub, thank you very much for being an amazing supporter and being the only one who's taken up on the Tier 2 to Tier 3 subs to listen in live. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can do so by going to twitch.tv forward slash Stacey Kruger, subscribing to me at tier two or tier three sub. That will get you in so you can listen to the podcast being recorded live. You can also submit topics for the podcast. We love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for continuing to listen to us. We'll catch you next time.